Hi, kindergarten, first and second grade leaders. We're preparing for June 14th in our series called Follow the Leader. Today, we get to talk about Christmas. Crazy to celebrate Christmas in June, but how exciting it is to be able to show kids that the story of Jesus' birth is good for us to celebrate at Christmas, but it's important for us to realize it affects our days, our, our life every single day. Your lesson today, I'm not going to go over the Christmas story. I'm assuming that you know that story. So I'm just going to jump in and let you know that your, um, your large group that you're used to somebody teaching the Bible story in will be on a DVD. We have recorded everything that you're used to getting during a large group time and put it on a DVD so that you can manage that within your classrooms. And the amazing thing about that is you can play um, a worship song more than once if you want to. You can um, watch the video more than once if you want to so that you can make sure that you get all of the different um, things that it was were pointed out in those videos. So have fun with that and um, enjoy being able to have the flexibility within your group to create the experience to help kids understand what the Christmas story is. Then, um, so I'm gonna point out some things that you have, whether you do it in this order or you don't do it in this order, it doesn't really matter to us, but you, we've given you all of these things so that you can fill the hour that you're with kids. Your um, social activity, you have some large dice. I'm gonna pay attention and see if these large dice work for you. If it, it makes it hard to play this game, which it might, uh, you may have to let kids, if they don't have hands like mine, and they probably don't as because I have long fingers, um, they could use both hands to hold their dice and throw it. And what they're trying to do is make a sequence of numbers, starting with the number one. And so they get one chance to throw the dice, and however many um, they have, if they can get a one, two, three, or four, um, that's great. They would get points, um, 20 points for that. Uh, you will have helpers in your classrooms. They are called the crew. They are there to help the kids play the game. They can be there to help keep the score for you so that if you wanna keep score, they also have um, prepared to play some games with your kids to help to help the time pass and they might actually have some prizes that you can give as well and um, so ask a crew member if you need some help finding some things to to stretch your activities for the day and then your small group activity is going to be a fun one and in fact, I can't wait to hear some of the crazy tricks that people can do. One time in an adult small group I was in, one of the ways that we spent time getting to know each other is we called them stupid human tricks. Now, that might be a, a hot button word within your small group. But what we um, learned about each other is all of us have some crazy things that we're able to do. One of the girls in our group could put her whole fist in her mouth. I saw her do it. If you don't believe it happens, it does happen. Um, trying to remember some of the other things. There were just some crazy things that um, people were able to do uh, that they that we called stupid human tricks. And so use this game as a way to figure out some things that kids can do that you didn't know that they could do, or maybe not any, everybody else knew they could do that. So it's called Promises, Promises. And what you're going to do, and you may need to model this for the kids or ask a crew member to help model this for kids, is they're going to say, I promise I can, and I'm going to make up one. I promise I can jump five feet off the ground. I don't know that I really could, but it would be fun to try. And so everybody in the group has to decide, do they think that they can with a thumbs up or do they think they can't with a thumbs down? And then the person who said that they promised they can do that, if they are actually able to do that, then the people that said thumbs down, they get to sit out. And um, you know, the out and the in is not so important as much as it is to figure out how, about each other and see who, um, who can do things and who can't do things. And then ultimately, 
what this points us back to is God's promise. And God's promise was true. It was not just a promise to do a stupid human trick. His promise was to send a Savior to rescue us from our sins. And he did that. And that Savior was born as a baby as we celebrate today in our lesson about Jesus being born. In your memory verse activity, you have kind of your bingo card that you're going to um, have the kids read the memory verse to you. Then you're going to take the sticky notes and cover up all of the words and one um, square at a time, ask kids um, to tell you what word they think is under that square. Now, if they're really smart and can, can read pretty good, they're going to notice that they can see through our sticky notes. So that's okay. It doesn't matter that this is a perfect game. Um, it, is, it matters more that we're helping them understand um, that God's word is important and it's important for us to remember. In fact, this one, if we remember it, in the beginning was the word. What we are remembering is that Jesus was with God in the beginning of time. God Jesus is God, and he was with God in the very beginning. Something very important for all of us to understand. I know I've been in a conversation with kids before where they're where they didn't um, they didn't believe that he was fully God and fully man. They believed that they were he was fully man because he was born to a mama. But they were having a really difficult time with the fully God part. And so today you get to really emphasize Jesus was with God in the beginning of time. He was fully God. He couldn't have done most of the things he did if he was not fully God. So maybe today you want to have a conversation about what you think a baby might look like as fully God. And and talk about those things. We don't know those things for sure, but it sure would be fun to imagine what that might look like in his family. Then you can pray. You also have some coloring pages that you can have the kids color as you wait for families. If you'd like to go outside, you're welcome to do that. Just make sure you're back in your room before um, parents come to pick up. We need to have everybody in their spaces so that we don't have a lot of crossing um, across all of the campuses. And then the other thing to remember is each service has their own um, supply bucket. And so when you are done with your supply bucket for a for whichever service you're serving. If you would like to put it outside your door, you can do that. Or if you're walking out and on your way out, feel free to drop it on the, the racks where we are collecting that and getting that ready for the next time. Thank you so much for serving. Please remember to be respectful of the rooms that we are in. The cabinets and the closets are not for us to get into right now. You have everything you need in your bucket. So I appreciate you being mindful um, and, and keeping, um, keeping your kids. And um, if you need anything, please holler at one of us. We'd be happy to get it for you. Uh, we do not need to be in all of the cabinets there. Those cabinets in, in those rooms are used for our Mother's Day Out program. Thank you so much for leading. I look forward to seeing you guys soon.